Okay guys, I am back in my old studio for this one. I left it here set up this way because I knew something like this would happen. My children, you see they're sick, so I can't go out to my studio because my wife is not in town. So I am back in the basement making a video like I used to do when we did all of our videos on the ZV E10. People are waiting for the ZV E10 Mark II. I want to call it Mark II because Mark feels like it's named after me and it should be because I love it so much. And people are asking me, should I wait for the Mark II or should I buy the ZV E10 now? What do you think the Mark II will bring to the table? Well, we're here to talk about it. So I was going to do a whole new color grading tutorial on the ZV E10, but of course my plans were cut short by children with fevers and after all I am the world's greatest dad. So I have pivoted and I am doing a video that's been often requested. Plus I just love chatting about this stuff, musing about the things that we will see coming in the future and see if it is something that floats your boat. By the way, there's nothing in this that is nefarious. It is all, it's a health drink. You hear that sponsors? A health drink, nothing else. So I think assuming specs is a little bit tricky for the ZV E10 because uh, Sony just released the A6700, their flagship APS-C hybrid camera. And not too long ago, they released the FX30, which is their video beast of an APS-C camera. I have a lot of APS-C cameras here from Sony and uh, these two share the same sensor. So uh, anybody with a functioning cerebellum is gonna think that uh, the new ZV E10 mark two, if that's what they call it, will have this same sensor. And that's a great thing because it is a fantastic sensor. But that begs the question, how will they make this camera worse than those two cameras? Because it's going to be cheaper, so it definitely has to be worse than those cameras in some ways. And knowing Sony, it will be better than those cameras in a couple of ways because they just, it, I like it about Sony is that if they think of a new thing, they just throw it in their camera. They don't hold back, even if that makes owners of cameras who are a little bit older, a little bit miffed sometimes, but they're getting better with the firmware updates. Anyway, I think it will have this same 26 megapixel sensor that is in the A6700 and FX30. And that of course means 10-bit 422, which I think is an absolute necessity going forward. So to have a little ZV E10 with that nice 10-bit 422 fantastic 4K image, that will be wonderful. It will also mean the rolling shutter will be much better on the ZV E10 because the rolling shutter on the FX30 and the A6700 is pretty good. It's somewhere in between the uh, ZV E1 and the A7 IV. So it's not fantastic, but it is quite good. I, I personally have no trouble with the A7 IV and its rolling shutter. So anything better than that, I think is a super bonus. And uh, this will have that because it will have the same sensor. Now, these two cameras do 4K 60 and they do 4K 120 at a 1.5 times crop. Now, will the ZV E10 Mark II get that? And it's not a total given that it will. I would love it if it got the 4K 120. I'm sure it's going to definitely get the 4K 60, but I don't know if it will get the 4K 120. And the reason I think that is a thermal management. It's like if you look at the uh, A7CR. Now, while that has an 8K sensor, it doesn't do 8K video like the A7R5. So they have the same sensor, but the A7CR does not do 8K video, whereas the A7R5, I almost got confused for a second, the A7R5 can do 8K, but not the A7CR. So, and I think personally, I asked Sony myself when I was on the call with them, they weren't the guy who was doing the presentation. He didn't know. The Sony engineers did not tell him why they didn't put the 8K in the A7CR. So he said, my guess of a thermal management is as good of a guess as any, perhaps the camera, because the A7CR is a small little camera body. Perhaps that overheats very quickly in 8K. So uh, Sony didn't want to put that in there and deal with that headache. So if the 4K 120 overheats very quickly on the ZV-E10 Mark II, which it might, they might just leave it out 
altogether because the 4K120 definitely overheats and they wears it. Uh, the A7, A6700 wears it. It's in my hand. The A6700, it uh, the 4K120 overheats after about 20 minutes on me. And this is a magnesium alloy body, whereas the ZV-E10, this is a mostly plastic body designed for lightweight work, you know, you just carry it around, you're vlogging, you know what I mean? So uh, the thermal management in this, unless they put a nice heat sink in there, which I doubt that they will, then um, probably this will overheat. So I'm not so sure about the 4K 120. Let me know down below what you guys think they're gonna do with that. I do think it will have all of the latest AI autofocus, which will be fantastic for the tracking, the animals, the planes, the birds, everything. That uh, AI autofocus is going to be in this camera, I think, going forward. And that will be great. The, I had no complaints at all with the autofocus on the ZV-E10. And I think it will have the AI auto framing as well. That is in the A6700. Now, uh, those new AI features and that auto framing it is not in the FX30 so the little ZV-E10 Mark II will probably have that advantage over this guy and I think it will use the FZ100 battery in the camera because that is the battery for all of the other current generation cameras I can't see them sticking with the uh, FW50 battery for this thing. They're gonna move on, I think, which will make the grip a tiny bit bigger, but once again, that's a better thing. I think it will have better ergonomics. It will sl have a slightly beefier grip, but they will try to keep it as small and as lightweight as possible. So it will look very much like this, but perhaps a more contoured, beefier grip, which I would appreciate to fit that FZ100 battery. I think it will also have 4K30 streaming via USB-C. Once again, I don't know about the overheating with that particular thing, but uh, when they announce the camera and I buy it immediately, I will definitely try it out and let you guys know, but it will be an option to stream 4K30 straight from USB-C with this guy. And I also think instead of that hefty 40% active stabilization crop, it will be more like the 10% stabilization crop of the A6700 and the FX30. But here we are at another point that I'm not so sure will go into the camera. Even though it will be billed as a budget vlogging camera, they may leave out the IBIS entirely. They've got to leave out some things to make it a cost effective unit and the IBIS system might be one of those things, ironically, even though it's gonna be billed as a vlogging camera, but Sony relies heavily on that electronic stabilization. So uh, they might just put that in this camera and it probably will do a pretty good job because the new Sony electronic stabilization is quite good. And as long as it doesn't have that big old 40% crop that this one had in active stabilization, then maybe that is how they will go with that. I also think, and this will be a downgrade from this ZV-E10, I don't think that they will have mechanical shutter in the uh, ZV-E10 Mark II. Once again, they're trying to save costs, so taking things out like the IBIS and the uh, mechanical shutter will save some dollars. It will have no EVF, of course, because the ZV cameras don't have that anyway, so that will be a cost savings. The body will be a cost savings. So, you know, there's no mechanical shutter in the ZV-E1, so that's setting a pretty big precedent right there for the ZV cameras. So, uh, I still think you'll be able to take your 10 or 11 frames per second, but it will be in electronic shutter. Now, I am hoping that is not true because I really use this camera a lot for photos. I think it's a fantastic photo camera. So not having that mechanical shutter, that will cause problems at times. And if someone wants to use this as a true hybrid, they are going to miss that mechanical shutter. So for me, it's just a guess, but I doubt it will have mechanical shutter. I also don't think it will have that dynamic stabilization that is in the ZV-E1 because that dynamic stabilization, in my opinion, it's only in two cameras, the ZV-E1 and the new A9 Mark III that is yet to be released. And I think that that has to do with sensor readout. Because the uh, ZV-E1 has that A7S3 FX3 sensor, it reads out so very fast that uh, they can do more things with that sensor when it comes to that dynamic stabilization. Making electronic stabilization with a sensor that reads out that fast, I think helps. And the global shutter, 
They don't have to worry about the sensor readout with the global shutter, so they can do it with the A9 III. This camera here having the same sensor readout as the uh, a6700 and the FX30. I just don't think that's going to be fast enough to be able to do that dynamic active stabilization. And also it's an APS-C camera, so it's going to be cropping in since it's a vlogging camera. They may not want to go down that route. Again, I'd love it if it was in there, but uh, I just don't see it working quite as well as the ZV E1 or the A9 III. I also think the screen will be a Sony screen. They will use the A6700 screen, that 1.03 million dots, making everybody go, why don't you put better screens in? And Sony, why don't you put better screens in your camera? But they probably will do that. Again, you're talking about bulk. You know what I mean? Let's use the same sensor. Let's use the same parts that we can. Same battery, same sensor, same screen. They're gonna try to save as much cost as they can to get to that lower budget market people like me who are definitely going to buy this no matter what I just you know Sony they, they've got me already no matter what I am buying this camera but uh, they're also going to want sensible people you know who take time and make informed decisions now when it comes to the release date a lot of people are under the misinformation that cameras are like phones or maybe like a GoPro camera that just gets updated every single year Sony usually waits about four years before they update a camera sometimes it's three years but it's almost always about four years this was actually released in August of 2021 people think it's an old camera but it's not that old it's just two years and a little bit it won't even be three years until August of 2024 so it's quite possible you won't see this camera the new version until August of 2025 it's quite a ways away that time frame so it's possible i suppose that it could do a three-year release seeing how they already have the sensor out in production it's possible but i am not holding my breath so if you're someone out there who thinks should i wait i personally this is just a guess sony doesn't tell me anything i don't think they like me very much but they don't tell me anything but i would think that if you're gonna wait you'll be waiting for quite some time. These rumor mills have been saying this camera, the Mark II has been coming for years now, which makes no sense to me at all. Once again, Sony usually, like look how long it took to update the A7 III to the A7 IV or the A7C to the A7C II. The A7S III has been out for quite a while now. So what I'm saying is don't expect quick updates. I don't think this is coming until at least the summer again. I don't know. All I know is I currently use this and I love it so much so I can wait. So I think it stays a lot cheaper than the FX30 for the following reasons. We have two card slots. We have the Cine EI menu. We have that fan for thermal management. This thing can just go and go and go. A solid, reliable workhorse of a camera. And this is a very, very popular camera with filmmakers who are very serious about their craft. And uh, this camera is worth to me the $1,800. And it, sometimes it goes on sale for $1,600. So uh, I think there's no real competition here like these are for different people and uh, this will cost less than this and for good reason with the a6700 you have a more robust body which is going to be better for weather sealing it's probably going to be a better photo camera this one will have mechanical shutter i doubt this one would have mechanical shutter maybe this will have 4k 120 and this one won't ibis maybe no ibis we will have to see because this camera is fourteen hundred dollars and if it's going to be cheaper we're going to have to shave some stuff out of it besides the evf that is so which leads us to the price what will the price be i definitely think there will be a price increase inflation has gone through the roof anyway so this one is 698 now i think if they don't include the ibis and it overheats a lot and it doesn't have 4k 120 you will see it at 798 that's what i think the new one would be but if they include actual ibis and not just electronic stabilization and or the 4k 120 i think you're going to see a 200 dollars price bump for body alone i would say it would be 898 with the body alone and then with the kit lens just under one thousand dollars i think they'll want to keep it under one thousand dollars but anyway that's just my opinion tell me down below what you think and uh, i better go now before i have to issue more tylenol to the children because i 
am the world's greatest dad after all. Bought this myself. Oh, big shout out from Peter from Poland who actually contacted me. He was the one that did that new intro, that animated thing that I like so much. So thanks very much, Peter. If I have any links for him, I will leave it down below. Just a guy who likes the channel who said, let me spruce up your intro. And he did. So thanks very much, Peter. And thank you for watching. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.